Today I'm sharing some of my best rope DIYs. I have five brand new DIYs along with some of my all time popular ones, even some from when I first started my channel and I'm sure you have not seen. Hey everyone, my name is Yami. I am your Latina next door. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I love sharing high-end home decor DIYs on a budget. So if you like videos like that, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to become part of the familia. Today I have a wide range of home decor DIY ideas using rope. And I am gonna be using some from Dollar Tree as well as some from my local craft stores. So let's get started. For this first DIY, we're gonna be using these little wall containers that I purchased at Dollar Tree. Now, I bought these a couple years ago, so I know that store does not carry them anymore. However, you can always check out their plant pots that they have right now. They have lots of plastic options in these sizes, and all you have to do is just cut them in half at a slight angle, and you can still get the same shape and use it exactly the same way. Now the first thing you're gonna do after you remove those labels is get some of that nautical rope you find at Dollar Tree. And you are going to apply it all over the front. Now make sure when you go across the very top that you cover as much of that border as possible. You don't want any of the orange from the container to show. Then you're gonna work your way down. Now when you get to the end, you wanna make sure you hold it very tight and glue it down very well so that it stays nice and taut and then work your way back over. Then once the entire container is completely covered, you're gonna wanna cut a shorter piece of rope and you're gonna attach it to the top. And the way you're gonna do it is you're gonna separate the ends cause it's gonna be able to attach to the inner wall better that way. And then you're gonna attach the other end the same way. This is gonna give it the look of a basket. Next, you're gonna take some floral foam from the Dollar Tree as well, and you're gonna cut them into wedges. That way you can stick them inside of our little basket. Next, you're gonna take some floral moss, and I did have a little bit left over in my stash, and you're gonna go ahead and hot glue it onto the top of the basket and that floral foam. That way we don't see anything inside. And as you can see, our little basket is starting to take shape. Then I took some of the succulents that I shared with you guys in my spring haul, and I cut some of the ends off of them, and then I started placing them inside of those little baskets, and I just stuck them through the floral foam. Now this is what your basket will look like once these steps are done. Now if you're happy with it, you can totally leave them like this. Now because these baskets are a little small, I wanted to add a little something more to give it more of a substantial look, as well as give it a little bit more of a farmhouse feel since you guys know I love that style. So I took these two canvas pieces that I also showed you guys in that haul, and I am gonna use it to create some wonderful backgrounds for these baskets. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is take some white chalk paint and paint the front of these canvases. Now eventually I'll be placing some white and gray scrap ticking fabric that I had in my stash and I'm going to be putting it on top of these canvases. However, since it's lighter than the actual canvas print, I wanted to make sure that the print did not shine through, which is why I'm painting it first. And of course the step did not have to be perfect, so I only gave it one coat. Then I took my fabric and I measured a piece that would fit all around the canvas print. 
Once my fabric was cut, I just laid down the frame on top of it and I just hot glued the edges all around. The entire time I was making sure that my stripes were lining up straight. Then for my frame, I used a 10 pack of stir sticks from my local Home Depot. It only cost me 99 cents for a pack of 10. Then I used my Folk Art Antique Wax to give them a nice stain. I didn't have to do the entire stick because the frame was gonna be smaller. Out of the 10 stir sticks, you're only gonna need to stain eight of them. And with the other two, you're gonna cut them and insert it in the frame. This is going to make the frame a little bit more sturdy when I hot glue the basket onto the frame. Now I use my mini miter saw kit in order to cut these rulers since they're very small. I'll go ahead and make sure to link to it in the description box below. Then I just assembled it around the canvas frame and I hot glued everything together, keeping in mind to keep the ruler part toward the inside back part of the frame. That way you wouldn't see it. And then I just worked my way around with the hot glue. And any areas that were left without any stain, I went ahead and touched up after it was assembled. And then all that was left was to put hot glue on the back perimeter of the basket and place it right in the center of the canvas. And this is how they turned out. And if you like them as much as I do, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. I love how everything came together, but I am curious. Do you like it with the frame or without the frame? Let me know in the comments below. Now these pieces actually went in my guest bathroom at my last house. You might recall if you saw that bathroom makeover and the full reveal. If you haven't seen it, I'll link to it in the description box below so you can check it out. But that is actually where I had them displayed. And I think they looked really good on the cabinet. All right, so for this next DIY, we're gonna be doing a wreath and we're gonna be using these green forms. You can get green um, wreath forms like this at Dollar Tree, but you can also get them at Hobby Lobby. And this time we're gonna be using some of their newer nautical rope in the lighter shade. Now I'm not sure if you can tell in this video because of the lighting, but some of these are a little bit more tan and others are a little bit more gray in tone. So I'm gonna be using the tan ones as well as some of the original nautical rope from Dollar Tree as well. Now, if you don't prefer to use the Dollar Tree nautical rope, that's totally fine. There are other great options out there like this beautiful white one that I use quite often for $1.99. It's at Hobby Lobby and you can get it at 50% off all the time. As well as this beautiful, more intricate gray one, it's $3.99 and as well, you can get it for 50% off. So for only a dollar more, you can get some really nice ropes. So there are many options out there that are very affordable that gives you the flexibility of adding different kinds of style to your rope DIYs. So for this, like I mentioned, I am gonna be using two of these ropes and I'm gonna be alternating them as I go around on the wreath. You can definitely do it with one style of rope, but I personally think that it is a little plain and if you wanna add a little bit of extra dimension and just take your DIY to the next level, I do suggest trying to alternate them. It really does make a huge difference. I glue down the first two pieces of rope side by side and use the seam of the wreath as a guide. And then I began to wrap it around. The key to making this look very nice and well made is keeping the ropes nice and straight and very tight against each other so that no green shows through. Now I kept going around as you can see and adjusting the rope as it went down the wreath. However, when you wrap something around a wreath, you will tend to notice that after a while, your angle of your ropes are gonna eventually change like you see right here. So what I did was I stopped when it started getting a little bit too vertical and then I began on the other side and worked my way down again. Now 
Now once I got to this point, I went ahead and stopped because the bottom I was going to add greenery to it. You guys know I love the coastal farmhouse theme and I thought I would add a little coastal touch with some palms on the bottom of this wreath. As you can see, both sides started to slant in a little bit, but because I did it on one side and then on the other, they both are nice and even. I used some hot glue to attach four different palms to the bottom of this wreath. And then in order to add a little bit of color and not overdo it, I decided to add one little piece of florals to the side of this wreath. And I just basically had this in my stash that I've had of leftover stems and it worked out perfectly for this. Now this next DIY is going to be one of these seven thrift store makeovers that I did in a recent very popular video that you guys enjoyed. I'll leave a link in the description box below if you haven't seen it, but for now you can enjoy one of these DIYs. Now for this next DIY, I'm going to be using this basket. I got it for 99 cents at my local Goodwill, but I'm not going to be doing anything to the basket because it's perfect as is. However, it was missing something, so I decided to go to my stash and see what I had. And I remembered that I had these three styrofoam balls from my local Dollar Tree, as well as some ribbon that I had left over from other projects that I kind of bought a little bit too much, and I thought I'd go ahead and use my items that I had on hand. Now, these ropes that you see here are from Hobby Lobby, and I always like to get them when they're 50% off because the white rope is actually a dollar when it's on sale and then the gray rope is two dollars when it's on sale and sometimes it's worth getting something that's a little bit more higher quality from another store and you'll see the difference in your final product and I love both of these ropes and instead of just using one rope which is what you usually see people use I decided to go ahead and use both of them together to create this beautiful striped almost nautical look for these decorative spheres Now the trick to getting a nice sealed end is to actually glue down one of the ropes first and then taking the second rope, wrapping it over the end of the previous rope and gluing the very edge back in. Now I wanted to create several of these and I wanted them to all kind of be different. So I was kind of looking through my stash and I found this piping that's supposed to go inside fabric it was removed from something else that I previously had owned and I just kept it in case I needed it for something and I decided to use it to give my second decorative sphere a little bit of a different color and texture and also you can see that there's varying heights between the ropes so it kind of adds a different element to it and for my third sphere, I had this rope that I had unraveled. It's that nautical rope from Dollar Tree. Well, the minute you unravel it, it gets really messy and I just didn't want to use it. And I still had this piece hanging around because I didn't want to throw it away. So I decided why not use it for one of these little decorative spheres. And it actually worked very well because by gluing it down on the styrofoam, it kept all of the individual strands from becoming undone. So it worked for this application. And here they are completed.
So for this next DIY, we're going to be creating a napkin ring and we're going to be using one of these book rings that you can find at Dollar Tree. They come 12 to a pack for just a dollar along with some of the piping that I had left over in my stash. As you can see, I have looped the piping like this over that little book ring. Then I'm going to hold the left piece with my left hand. I am going to bring the piping again through the book ring. Then I am going to lift up that piping and pull it through. I'm going to pull it tight and then I'm going to hold that little piece that I just looped with my left hand while I do it again. Now after you do it a couple more times, you won't have to hold the end, but in the beginning you do in order to keep it stable from moving back and forth on the ring. And then of course you'll continue to do this all the way around the little hook ring. This is what it'll look like when you reach the end. And what I like to do is I just like to cross the two strands over each other like this. Bring it around. Cut the one that went underneath. Glue that down with a little bit of hot glue. And then cut the second piece and make sure that's glued down as well. Now this next DIY comes from a more recent trash to treasure video and it's basically where I took a ton of leftover pieces, items from just around my craft room and I put them together in order to create a beautiful basket. All right, so for this next one, we're going to be using these little pieces of felt that I have had for quite some time. As you can see, one of these has been cut out for something else. I have some cording that I bought a couple of years ago that was meant to reupholster a chair. Still haven't gotten to it, still have the chair, but here it is. And I also have this bucket from Dollar Tree that I bought during Christmas time. I absolutely love the shape. I didn't do anything for Christmas, so I thought I would do something now. Now the first thing I did was place the bucket over the gray piece of felt. Now I didn't have enough for it to all be white, so that's why you see me using a different color. I am gonna use this to cover the inside bottom of the bucket. I wanna make sure that not only the outside's finished, but also the inside as well. And something like these felt sheets that you get for, for a dollar at your local craft store is actually really good to use to line some projects on the inside. Because I had more white felt sheets, I used these ones for the inside walls of the bucket. Now, as I cut these to fit the inside of the bucket, I began to hot glue them now, and I started with the one on the bottom first. Then I added the inside walls. Because these are individual sheets and I needed to use several for the inside of the bucket, I did have to cut the ends at an angle because the top of the bucket was wider than the bottom. Thank you. 
I made sure to cut down the felt to be the same height as the bucket and then once the inside lining was done I came around with the cording and began to glue it all around the bucket. Now you probably already guessed that I am making a basket however I had several different types of rope laying around that were extra from previous projects and I wanted to go ahead and use them up. So I'll be using them in this basket so that you can see how you can add extra dimension and interest to your DIY baskets without it just being one monotone piece of rope. After I was at about just over half of the basket, I took some leftover white rope from my little decorative balls that I did in my last thrifted video, and I decided to add it to this basket. Now I only had enough to wrap it around twice, but I was determined to make a pattern out of this, and you'll see in just a minute. So after wrapping it around once, I cut the white ribbon. Then I added some of Dollar Tree's really thick nautical rope and added that around the basket twice over. And then I added the other piece of white rope and then added the old cording that I had originally wrapped the basket around with again. Now I did stop before getting to the top and I decided to wrap my handles and I like doing this before I wrap around the rest of the rope because you'll actually be able to cover up the ends of the handles where you have them covered with the rope that you're going up the basket. So I took some very thin leather strap pieces that are actually meant for jewelry and I began wrapping the handles around. You guys, I have so many things for so many things <laughs> it is kind of nice to see what you have on hand and use them for projects like this i'm just saying After I finished the handles, I continued with the cording and began wrapping it around all the way to the top. I made sure to be very careful and cover every last little bit of red. And I also went back in the inside of the basket and added a little bit of cording to clean up the seams between the felt sheets. And here is how this basket turned out. So for this next DIY, we're going to be using this little Dollar Tree mirror that didn't make it in one piece from our move. So I decided to save it, give it a more coastal look that would look really darling in a bathroom. So as you can see here, I am removing the rest of the pieces that had broken off. I didn't know where the other pieces were and it was just too late to salvage it. So I decided to just go ahead and continue removing them. I took some of my home decor chalk paint in white Adirondack and I gave the mirror two coats. Now I wasn't worried about being too perfect painting around the mirror because I could just come right back and wipe everything off. Next I used another old Dollar Tree round mirror and I used it to make a template out of some cardboard in order to cut out a circle. I glued the mirror to the center of the round cardboard circle and then I used the large nautical rope in order to wind it around and what I did was I tucked it underneath the lip of the mirror so that there was no 
obvious end piece and then I began wrapping it around hot gluing it down with some hot glue. Now when I came to the end of the rope, I wanted to make sure and stop at the part where the rope would have risen again and created a new row. This ensured that the rope surround was not going to be wonky on one side, maybe a little bit thicker than the other, and it would stay perfectly round. I hope that makes sense. As you saw, I cut off the excess cardboard that was sticking out a little bit, and then with that same end piece of rope, I made a little hoop so that I can hang it. Now, as you probably noticed, there were pieces of the edge of the little mirror that were missing, obviously, because of how the little end pieces broke off. So what I did to hide it was take a little bit of thin white nautical rope. And what I like to do is I like to tape the end pieces so that I can insert it underneath that little lip right there and then wrap it around the edge of the mirror hot glue it with hot glue and then bring it back down and actually use that same little opening to tuck the end of the rope in as well. So the broken little parts actually worked in my favor. Before I cut off the end piece, I took a little bit more of clear tape, wrapped it around the rope so that it wouldn't unravel everywhere, and then stick it right inside of that little piece that was missing on the side of the mirror, and then use a little bit of hot glue to secure it in place. The next DIY I'm making comes from a trash to treasure video that I filmed not too long after I moved into our new home. Now it first started off as a coaster that I had created for a previous DIY. So I took this and added even more nautical rope. I wanted to create a basket for this little plant that I had in my sunroom that was looking really sad because it never got a plant pot. It's basically been in the little black pot that you get from the nursery. So I got it to as wide as I needed it and then I added a couple of leftover popsicle sticks in between the rope to add a little bit more stability. Now this didn't quite work the way I wanted to but it did add a little bit more stiffness to the bottom of it and I'll show you how. I spaced the popsicle sticks evenly and then I started to work my way up on the rope adding a wall to it and basically the popsicles were supposed to help hold the wall kind of together however i noticed it started bringing the rope inwards instead of just straight up so i cut them with my little crafting shears that i love so much and i left them in there because it did create kind of like a stiffer wall at the bottom but i just didn't need the entire popsicle stick and then i just started working my way up the basket When I finally finished all of my entire nautical rope, I realized that it still wasn't tall enough to cover the little plant pot. So since I couldn't go out, I had to get creative. And I also had some white rope left over from a previous project. So I decided I'm just gonna use this until it's done and over with. And lucky enough, 
it was enough to cover the pot. And so now my cute little plant in the sunroom has a much better little pot to sit in. Not bad I think for using whatever I had on hand and then being extra resourceful and trying to finish the project. My next DIY is coming from one of my Dollar Tree mystery box challenge videos. If you don't know what that is, it's a whole lot of fun and I am doing it again at the end of this month. That's going to be the bonus video. You guys won't believe what I received in my box this go round. So make sure you stick around so that you don't miss out on that one. For this DIY, I start off with a small burner cover from Dollar Tree. And I took some spray paint that I had in the color black and gave it a coat both on the back and the front. I had this mirror from Dollar Tree that I've had for quite a while. It's kind of broken um, and I never really repaired it. So I thought this would be great for this. I wanted to include it inside of that little metal piece, but first I needed to raise it up because it wouldn't lay flat because of the size and the tapering of the edge of the burner cover. So I had this random piece of wood and with some Gorilla Glue and a combination of hot glue, I glued it on to the bottom center of the little cover and then I glued the mirror onto the wood piece and that way it kind of floated and it was a lot more even than it would have been if I had put it in by itself. I took some of that nautical rope and I wrapped it around the frame. And what I usually do is before I cut off or remove that piece of tape at the very end, I take a little bit of hot glue and just spread it through the ends before I remove the tape so it doesn't just fall apart when I take it off. I then hot glued the rope around the frame, leaving the portion on the top free so that I can have some slack for it to hang. I cut the other end of the rope once I knew how much slack I needed and I glued it on to the other edge. After it was dry, it was ready to hang up on the wall. Now for this next DIY, we're going to be making another napkin ring. Now I am using this cardboard tubing that I am going to be cutting to size. However, you can use these round silver plastic napkin rings that you can get at Dollar Tree. They're actually really good quality and I've used them before to make other DIY napkin rings as well. Now after I cut it to the appropriate size, I take some of the smaller gray, more intricate looking rope and I begin to wrap it around. Now once I get to the end, I'm going to take that rope and wrap it around itself to create a nice decorative circle on the front of the napkin ring. I'll cut the end of the rope, wrap it around over itself as you can see, and make sure to glue it on top of the very end so that no end of any rope is seen. And that's it for this napkin ring. However, I do think that having that little extra detail in the front really gives it a nicer look.
So this next DIY is going to be this beautiful basket that I created last year for Valentine's Day and it really does take baskets to a whole new level. I'm using this little metal tin left over from Christmas but you can use any metal container with or without handles. I am also going to use this nautical rope found in the floral section. And in order to give this piece of decor a little bit of a coastal look, I'm going to be using this white nautical rope that I found at Hobby Lobby for $1.99, but I got it for half off. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is adhere the nautical rope onto the little bucket. And I'm going to use hot glue for this, and I'm going to work my way around making sure that I cover every little bit of red from that bucket. Then when I get to the end of that rope, I make sure that that's very tight and secure and I keep the ropes very close together as I glue them. Then when I get to about two thirds of the way up, I am gonna cut the rope where it kind of goes up every single level and that's where I'm gonna attach the new white nautical rope. Now this nautical rope unravels quite easily, so I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue to make sure that it doesn't at the very end. And then I am gonna glue it on to the very edge of the nautical rope, and I am gonna continue going around. Then when I got to this height, I decided to stop because I wanted to address the little handles. I wanted to cover them up as well. That way you wouldn't see any red. And I ended up using this jute from Dollar Tree as well. And this is what I did. I glued one end of the jute down at the very bottom of the handle and I started wrapping it around very tightly using a little bit of hot glue to keep it in place. And now in order for this to not look messy, you wanna take your time and make sure you're wrapping the jute really close next to each other, not overlapping. The tighter and neater you do this, the better it will look. Then once both handles were done, I continued to glue the white nautical rope all the way around making sure that I covered the ends of the jute that covered the handles and hid them underneath. And then when I got to the end, I cut the rope and I frayed the end a little bit and then I glued that on the inside of the bucket. Now the inside of the bucket is going to be covered, however I decided to go ahead and get some white chalk paint and paint the inside top portion of it. That way in case there's any little peaks or anything, you wouldn't see any red. Okay, so next I'm going to get my wood tint in the color walnut and I am going to stain this little broken dowel that was left over from a previous project and I'm going to give it one good coat. Next, I'm going to take this little softball that comes in a pack of three from Dollar Tree and I am going to drill a hole in it, the size of that dowel. Next, I'm going to take these roses that I got from Dollar Tree and I already removed the stems. Now, I took the green backing off, but in order for them to stay together, you're going to have to add a little bit of hot glue throughout and in between the petals. Then I'll cut the ends off and then I'll adhere it to the little softball with some hot glue. I am going to continue this for the top portion, adding whites to the top, adding a lighter peach color to the center and a darker peach color to the bottom, giving it an ombre look. And then once the flower ball is finished, you're going to add a little bit of hot glue to the end of that dowel and 
and start it through that hole all the way to the end. And then I add a little bit more hot glue to secure it. Next, I'm simply adding some floral foam from Dollar Tree, trying to fill in any large gaps. Next, I use a pencil to poke a hole in the center of the foam, and then I inserted the dowel. I got some floral moss from Dollar Tree, and I added it throughout the entire bottom with some hot glue. Now even though this was created for Valentine's Day purposes, you can recreate this for any season of the year using your very own colors that you enjoy in your home. Now for this next one, we are going to be using this vase from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to be applying the white rope all around the base of it. Now I am going to be using hot glue for this. Sometimes hot glue doesn't tend to stick very well to glass, and in order to make the rope stick better, what I like to do is as I'm going up with the different rows, I am actually adding the hot glue very close to the previous row of rope, and I am making sure that it kind of gets smushed in between both ropes. So not only am I attaching it to the glass, but also to each other. Now before I went any higher, what I did was I went to my leather stash. I get these scraps of leather from Hobby Lobby in small bags and they're actually very inexpensive and I like to have them around whenever I want to add a little something extra to a DIY and I think this would be perfect to add a little bit of a more higher end look to this piece. So I just wrapped it around and cut it to where it would meet all the way around the glass. Now when I was ready to attach it, I took some hot glue, made sure that I was butting up right up at that rope, and then I lined it with hot glue all the way around and made sure it met at the ends. Now I cut this slightly smaller. I wish I would have had just a little bit more on it, but it's totally fine because I did end up covering it up with a piece of rope. Now I did add another row of rope so that I can cover the bottom seam of the leather piece. That way it looks like one continuous piece that covers the bottom of this vase. Now you can very well leave it here. However, I added a piece of the smaller white rope. It's the same style, only it's a little bit thinner and I wrapped it around the top portion of the leather piece. Once I came back around with that smaller rope, I used the end piece to cover up the seam on the back of the leather and make it as clean as possible. This last DIY is going to be another project that I did for that previous mentioned Dollar Tree Mystery Box Challenge. Now for the next DIY, I'm going to take the other burner cover, the one that's larger, and I am going to cover this up with that nautical rope. I began wrapping the rope around from the perimeter and working my way in. That way the circular motion would stay pretty even. If I started from the center and work my way out, it actually might not look very even or I might go toward one side more than the other, so I figured working from the outside in was better. 
I tried my best to make the seams as clean as possible and kept wrapping towards the center. Once the inside of the burner cover was fully covered with rope, I went to the outside again and added one layer right on top of the very edge. And then after that one was done, I added a second layer on the outside of that. This way I would cover up the metal rim and then I would have an additional space for rope to go underneath and cover the rest of the plate on the bottom. I wanted some handles for this tray so I decided to do something a little different and use some leather. This was actually left over from a previous project and I got a strip and I cut it in half. Using some hot glue I adhered it to either end of the tray making sure that I actually adhered those strands where there were seams that way you could not see any from the sides and this is how that project turned out. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below which one of these projects was your number one. Don't forget to subscribe to keep getting more home decor and DIY ideas like these. And I will see you next week for more. Until then, adios.